In Judges chapter number 7, the nation of Israel are facing a grave situation. They're facing an enemy that outnumbers them by far. And it doesn't look like, Brother Bob, there's any hope for them. Let's begin reading verse number 1. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod. So the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into your hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by, by himself. Likewise, every one that bows down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to the mouth, were three hundred men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go every man unto his place. Now look down verse 16. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand, and empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the, the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and brake the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and brake the pitchers that held the lamps in their left hands. And the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the hosts ran and cried and fled. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that you are a great God. Far greater than our comprehension. That God, you can take but a few with some trumpets and lamps and send a mighty army a-running. God, you can uh, blow a breath from heaven and change a whole congregation. God, you can do great and mighty things which we know us not. So, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you do something great in our midst. I pray you'd help somebody greatly. Lord, there may be somebody here today unsaved, wrestling with their past, I pray today would be the day of their salvation, as Brother Ron's already prayed. God, I pray they'd come give their heart and life to Jesus. Maybe somebody's here and they don't have a soiled past, but they don't have a past where they've trusted Christ. I pray today would be that day. Maybe somebody here, Lord, is saved but had been struggling. I pray you'd give them some victory today. Lord, it's good to see uh, Brother John and, 
and uh, our Milan contingent, it's uh, Miss Rosemary, she's recovered from COVID, what a blessing. Lord, I'm thankful for that, and it's thankful to see others that had been sick and they're back. Lord, I do pray this morning for Miss Marcy, you touch her and help her. And God, I pray as well for the others that are sick, I pray for this family, this lady that passed away, you'd help uh, that family and comfort them. And Father, for the next few minutes, use this unworthy vessel, glorify your name. We'll thank you and praise you for what you do. We love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for first loving us. For it's in your wonderful and holy name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice a few things in this text before we get to the message. I want you to notice that God pruned Israel. There were 32,000 ready to go to battle. And God pruned them, took 22,000 out of the way. said, if there's any afraid, any fearful, let them go back to the house. Can I say that in the work of God, we're always in a battle. Now, if you listen to TV evangelists, you won't find that out very often, but we have an enemy who walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And can I say what we are in is a battle not with flesh and blood, but it's a spiritual battle. And can I say in this battle, uh, God still prunes those that are fearful and afraid. Because uh, my dear friends, uh, this is a battle of faith. Uh, this is a battle of dependence on Almighty God. Uh, and if you're fearful and afraid, uh, and fear overrides your faith, you'll be no use of God uh, to God, and you'll be no use to His service. Uh, so he pruned them. Can I say, thank God for valiant men and women, mighty men and women, those who may not have a lot of ability, but they got some faith. And they put that faith in Almighty God, and God has brought down strongholds through the generations in honoring faith. We see he, he, he purged them, and he pruned them. He pruned them of the... 22,000, then he purges them. He's got 10,000 left. He says, let them go drink. And those that got down and drank, and then those that lapped it up like a dog. He said, I want them dog lappers. Thanks be unto God for good old Gentile dogs. Huh? That's all we are. And you realize that all the promises that God gave to Moses and Abraham dealt with the nation of Israel. They're the true vine of God. Uh, but through Jesus Christ, he grafted in a branch in the vine uh, of the church, uh, made a way where old Gentile dogs could get in. Uh, hallelujah for those uh, that hadn't got over being just an old dog. That's all we were. Uh, we had the mange. Uh, we wasn't fit for nothing. Uh, but God came by. Uh, he loved us anyway. Uh, through the blessed work of the Holy Spirit, uh, he did away with the mange. Uh, I'm just glad to be a dog today hallelujah huh? I've been saved by the good grace of God so he's got them from 32,000 down to 300 that's less than 1% uh, thank God for them 1%ers I'll leave that alone mm. brother Brian you should have shouted on that what's wrong with you huh? Um, but we see after he pruned and purged them he prepared them in verses 16 and 17, he gave them instructions. He said, look, he gave every man a trumpet, every man a lantern. Listen, if I'm going to war, I don't want a trumpet and a lantern. Hmm? Uh, we had a name for those that were in the band. I will not use that name today. If you're in the band, God bless you. I hope you do well. You used the same name for them in your day, too. Yeah, yeah. Then you got smart. Anyway. Uh, I, I, I don't want a trumpet. I certainly don't want a pitcher. Huh? I want something that at least 50 cow, brother. Huh? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I have a newfound respect for this fella. Miss Annette went in a, and I went in a submarine this, this past week. This guy lived in one for 20 years. You, you're, you're weird. Anyway, <laughs> I have respect for him. Huh? You talk about claustrophobic. They had a trumpet and a pitcher. He said, put the pitcher over the lamp. 
He said, and when I blow my trumpet, you blow your trumpet, and then you break that pitcher and you cry as loud as you can cry, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Boy, that sounds like a great battle plan. I wonder if Eisenhower drew that up for D-Day. Hmm? Uh, doesn't make much sense. Can I say, most of the things of God doesn't make any sense. That's why God chooses us to believe by faith. See, if you can figure it out, it's by logic. Mm. That's what's wrong with this world. They're trying to do things logically. If this world would just put faith in God, there's no telling what God would do in this world. huh? Mm. He gets them down to 300 men. He prepares them to go to battle. Mm. I don't know about you, but if I'm holding a trumpet and I'm holding a pitcher with a lamp inside and we're facing a mighty host of an army, I'm probably a little nervous. I'm probably a little hesitant. Probably got a lot of reservation what we're fixing to do. I mean, all that thing has to do is go bad and they start charging at me. Oh, I got a trumpet. What am I going to do? Hit him over the head? He's got a sword and a spear and a shield. But they went by faith anyway. Can I say this? There's, you know, we've been told this, that there's strength in numbers. That works in every occasion but the way of faith. You know, it's filtered in religion. They tell you unless you're a big mega church, you're not really, you don't amount to much. Brother, you wait to the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to find some pastors that pastored a little congregation on the side of a molehill where nobody even knew it existed, but they were faithful for years to preach and to love Jesus. Uh, and you wait and see what God does for them, and you wait and see what God does with these mega pastors. Huh? But we're told there's strength in numbers. We're told that there's security in numbers. We're told that. Can I help you with something? There's only security in one. And his name is Jesus. Hmm? And there's also a society of numbers. There are folks that want to be a part of something that's big. Hmm? You know, there are a lot of folks that have left Baptist churches, go to these big mega churches so they can go, get lost in the crowd. Nobody knows if they're there or they're not there. Hmm? See, see, when you're part of a church, you're part of a family. And there's an accountability that comes with that and a lot of folks want to be accountable I got news for you we're all accountable to God mm. uh, but I want to preach on this thought now you've heard part of this title brother Randy get your pen out he hates long titles he's really going to hate this one we've all heard little as much when God is in it I want to preach on little as much when God is in it and much can do little without God in it let me say that again. You didn't shout on that one. And much can do little without God in it. Hmm? Uh, let me give you some things and we'll go to the house. Can I say, first of all, a little submission brings great victory. Look in verse number 9. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise and get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. You see, long before Gideon told the fellows about the trumpets and about the lamps and the pitchers, God had already talked to Gideon. Hmm? And Gideon made up his mind he's going to follow God. Uh, he submitted unto the Lord. He said, God, uh, you said it, uh, and I'm going to just trust you. And he just went out there and did what God said. Uh, and it brought a great victory. Uh, God breathed on that thing. Uh, that host got up and ran and fled. Uh, then it went on and all of Israel gathered and slew that crowd. What are you saying? A little submission brings great victory. Uh, you know why some of you have no joy? Uh, some of you have no victory? Uh, you haven't submitted it unto God. Uh, if you'd ever learn to just give God first place in your life, uh, if you'd ever learn to just trust God with it, uh, you'll find out uh, around every bend, uh, around every corner, uh, over every obstacle, uh, God's there, uh, and He'll give you victory. Uh, he'll give you hope. Uh, he'll give you joy. Uh, he'll give you peace through it all. Uh, hey, submission is the key. Uh, some of the most miserable people on the face of the earth are saved people 
who have not submitted their will to God. Hmm? Gideon made up his mind, I'm just going to believe God. Mm -mm. It may have sounded foolish to everybody else, but he'd heard from God. And can I say there's a lot of times when people look at you like two, like you got two heads when you tell them, I'm just going to believe God. Just believe God, it'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Gideon didn't back up. Gideon didn't fear. He didn't have any of that hesitation or reservation. He'd got a word from God. If God ever speaks to your soul about something, friend, you can bank on it. Uh, he submitted to the voice of God, to the word of God, to the very will of God, and it brought a great victory. Can I say this? A little sounding the alarm sends enemies running. They didn't need a sword. That just been extra weight. You know why sometimes you don't get some of the things you want? You don't need it. It'll just weigh you down. Mm. They, God gave them everything they needed. A trumpet and a lamp. When they sounded the trumpet, broke the pitcher and shined the lamp, shouted uh, uh, the sounding alarm, the sword of the Lord uh, uh, and of Gideon. You know what happened? Uh, it sent the enemy running. Uh, hey, we've got an enemy. Uh, but I said he's a roaring lion. Uh, he's not a biting lion. He just barks real loud. Uh, every now and then you just need to stand up and uh, uh, say the, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I shall not want. Uh, hey, every now and then you need to stand up and say blessed be the Lord. Uh, every now and then you need to just stand up and say hallelujah, praise the Lord. Uh, and watch it sends the enemy running. Uh, sometimes you just need to sound the alarm. Let this world know whose side you on. Mm, sends the enemy running. See, he can only drive you as far as to your knees. Mm. When you get up and shouting praises unto God and start shouting scripture, you know what he does? He'll go find somebody else to mess with. Mm. Little sound in the alarm sends the enemies running. Mm. Been a lot of times the enemy want to jump on your back. I want to mess with you. I want to put terrible things in your mind. And all you got to do is call on the name of the Lord. And he takes, he takes off. He can't mess with the Lord. He knows he'll lose. Mm. Uh, just a little submission. Brings great victory. Just a little sounding the alarm sends the enemy running. Can I say this? Just a little stand can inspire a nation. Hmm? Look at verse 21. Let's see it again. It simply says, And they stood, every man in his place, round about the camp. And all the hosts ran and cried and fled. Just a little stand can inspire a nation. Now let me help you something. You can't stand in somebody else's post. you got to stand where God planted you. But just a little stand can inspire a nation. Hmm? I'm reminded in 1 Samuel 17, the whole nation of Israel was trembling and fearful. The army of Israel hiding behind their shields over one man, a big, ugly, nine-foot, three-inch tall giant named Goliath. For 40 days, he come out and he cussed God, he cussed the army of Israel, and he asked for a champion to come and fight him. Said, if you defeat me, we'll serve your God. If we defeat you, you serve our God. Well, little ruddy shepherd boy showed up to bring some supplies to his brother. He said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of God? Huh? He said, Who's that man down there cussing God? He said, Is there not a cause? He looks around that crowd and says, Isn't there anybody here going to go whip that guy? They're all standing there looking at him like he's stupid. That's not a good word, Bella. Don't learn that word, okay? All right. I looked at him like he's a little silly. Uh, he knows what silly is. But what happened? David said, I'll fight him. So the king says, well, okay, boy. What's your qualifications? He said, I slew a lion and a bear. He said, here's my armor. Well, Saul was head and shoulders taller than anybody in Israel, and David just a, just a lad. Be like me take my suit coat off and giving it to Trevor there. He'd look foolish in it. 
David said, nah. He said, I'll use what I've proven. So what did he prove? A sling and a stone. Went down and got five stones out of a brook. Five smooth stones. Uh, he let one fly. He told that, that giant, he said, you come to me with spirit and sword. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Uh, let that stone fly. Hit that giant. The only place it didn't have armor. Right in the forehead. Uh, and listen. His stand inspired the nation. Uh, that, Goliath fell on his face, by the way. You never hit somebody in the forehead and they fall forward. Uh, the Lord smacked the giant in the back of the head and he fell down and David took that own, the, the giant's sword and slew him, cut his head off. The rest of that army rose to a cheer and they went to slaying Philistines until nightfall. Are you listening? One little stand inspired the, the nation. David went on to be heralded in Israel, champion of Israel. The Philistines feared his name. Why? Because he took a stand. Miss Nett and I just came back from Boston. Flew in yesterday morning. Spent all week up there. I was amazed by several things. I was amazed by all the towns founded in the 1600s. I was amazed by churches and school buildings and buildings that were built in the 1630s and they're still standing. Uh, we can't build anything today and it lasts very long. Hmm? But as we took the Freedom Trail and started listening and learning a little bit more about history up there, just a few men, men like Paul Revere, Samuel Adams, they just took a stand that we're not going to put up with all that England is putting on us anymore. Did you all know that the Boston Tea Party started in a church? They couldn't all fit in the church. There were 5,000 standing outside the church. They all got their tea and they went and dumped it in the harbor. Hmm? Why? Because a few men took a stand, inspired a nation. Hmm? I wonder what would happen if a few of us would just make up our mind. We're going to get revived and let Jesus have first place in our lives. I wonder what it would do. Huh? Hey, God has changed the world many times over with just a handful. Hmm? He changed the world with 12 men and one of them was of the devil. Hmm? I wonder what he could do with a congregation just make a stand. We're just going to do what's right. Hmm? Just a little stand can inspire a nation. You know, our nation is in bad shape. Our nation is looking for direction and we're not getting any. We're not giving any hope. We have no message as a country. We have no leaders that are standing and proclaiming anything that would inspire anything out of our people. The American people follow Donald Trump because he, he had a message. We don't have any message coming today from Washington. All we get is fear, fear, fear. And if you don't comply, you're an enemy. Huh? It's terrible. I wonder what this nation would do if just a crowd of folks just stood up and said, we're just going to believe God. Hmm? I wonder what would happen. I believe some others would believe God. I believe some others then would believe God. Who knows what would happen? Just a little stand can inspire a nation. Can I say this? America was founded on the principles of the Bible. What America needs today is the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I say just a little spark brings revival. I, I think too many messages have been preached on fire falling and the flood coming and everybody's waiting for a big wave to bring revival. Jeremiah just had a little fire burning up in his bones. It just takes a little spark to bring revival. Uh, we don't need something great, although I'm a candidate for great. If God wants part of Red Sea around here, I'm all for it. But if God just wants to change one heart and that spark everything, I'm all for that too. It just takes a little spark to bring revival. And I say this lastly. It just takes a little 
step of faith to remove mountains. Jesus told his disciples after he'd cast a demon out of a man, he said, they asked him, how come we couldn't do that? He said, that's not easy. It takes prayer and fasting. He says, but if you can have faith the size of a seed of a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou cast into the sea and it happen. That's not a lot of faith. Miss Sonny made this. There's a little seed in there. Put your bifocals on, you can see it. Uh, that's all it takes to move a mountain. That's a seed of mustard seed. That's just a little grain of mustard seed right there. See that? Not much. Pass that around. Just pass that around a little bit. Let everybody see that. Not much. Just a little faith removes a mountain. Week in and week out, talk to folks, and they talk about how big their problems are, what they're facing, what all's going on in their life. But Bob, I'm not seeing many mountains being moved. I'm not seeing many folks get much victory. All it takes is that. Just a little seed, a little grain of mustard seed. Doesn't take much. Just a little faith. A little faith removes mountains. What do you got hanging over you today? All it takes a little faith in God. Hmm? All it takes is a little step of faith. In a moment. I'm going to bid you like Gideon bid them to come down to the water. I'm going to bid you to come to the altar. Take a step of faith. No matter what's going on in your life, it cannot be overcome except by faith. And if you're willing to bring it to Jesus, He can handle it, friend. He may not remove the mountain. He may elevate you above the mountain. Might have a mountain of doubt. One step of faith removes all doubt. Might have some sickness going on. Why don't you bring it to the great physician? You might have some debt going on. Why don't you come and ask Jesus about it? You might have some physical things going on in your life. Maybe it's a co-worker. Maybe it's family. Or why don't you just bring that to Him? Maybe it's a burden for somebody to get saved. Why don't you bring that to Him? Just one step of faith. Maybe you're here today and it may be bigger than that. You may be lost. You may wonder, can Jesus really change my life and save me? Friend, He saved my life 47 years ago. If He saved me, He can save anybody. All it takes is a little step of faith. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's not a big thing. Just put your faith in the Lord. Say, Preacher, I don't know how to be saved. We'll take a Bible show you how to be saved. It's real simple. But it begins with a step of faith. You may be here today been wrestling with something. Why don't you just take a step of faith? Just takes a little faith. Just takes a little submission. Takes a little stand. Don't take much. Just takes a little. God doesn't require great things. Just little things. Why don't you come? A little lad gave his little lunch and God fed 5,000 people with it. Don't tell him what he'd do. Will you give him a little today? Folks are coming. Folks are making a step towards God. How about you? Let's all stand. Miss Renee, just come play something. Folks are coming. God spoke to your heart. Will you just come? Little's much, but God's in it. You're here today, and you don't know the Lord. Why don't you just come? Let us introduce you to Him. If you're here today and you're saved and you're facing something, why don't you just come, put your faith in the Lord. Let Him help you today. Oh, folks are getting help. 
He's a great big God, though. He can help you too. Watch it come. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.